Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of What Nobody Told Me After 65. Well, it's your lady on the go, lady in the know, Miss Info. You have reached the information nation, where knowledge is shared and wisdom exchanged for the betterment of the people. Oh, let's get started. I want to talk to you about what's up next. Yeah, what's up next? Have you considered that you have lived over 90% of your life? Already, 90%. What's up with the last 10%? What do you do with it? How do you keep going? As my grandmother used to say, to run on and see what the end might be. Some never made it this far. Did you ever think that you would live to see the age that you are now? To be a grandmother or a grandfather or a great grandmother or a great grandfather? How many times have you escaped life? Harrowing experiences, barely escaped. How many times did you not know how you were going to make it? An author, Stephen Covey, wrote a book where he described the 90-10 principle. 10% of life is made up of what happens to you. The other 90% is decided by how you react to what happens to you. So when I think about the fact that 90% of your life has already been dictated by events that took place in your life. You go to school, college, graduate, you get a job, join the military, get married, maybe have children, you buy a house, you buy a car, you take vacations, you bury your parents, maybe you're burying friends, you experience health issues, you learn to cope. Now, here you are at the 10% crossroad. That's what it is looking back over your 90% and thinking, what happened? So let's look at a hypothetical situation. This is something that could happen or may have happened to anyone at any time in anybody's life. You get up. You get dressed. You go downstairs to have your breakfast. Your spouse and your child are already in the kitchen. You sit down. Your spouse gives you a cup of coffee. Your child, in his or her haste to finish breakfast and prepare for school, accidentally knocks the coffee over. Spilling it onto your fresh outfit, your fresh clothes. You immediately yell at your child who starts to cry. Now you turn your attention to your spouse and you lay them out for putting the coffee too close to the edge of the table in the first place. You get some harsh words back from your spouse who's now angry. You run back upstairs. You change. On your way to get your car keys, you see the child is still sitting at the table, still crying. They missed the school bus. Now you got to take them to school. You storm out to the car. The child is running behind you to keep up, still crying. You speed off. And you're doing 45 in a 35 mile an hour zone. 
you get a $60 speeding ticket. You arrive at the child's school who jumps out without even saying goodbye. You race off to work. You're late. Your boss gives you a huge chewing out. You think to yourself, this day has not started off very good. Now you get through the work day. You arrive at home. You're getting a cold shoulder from your spouse who's still angry. Your child is barely talking and dinner is strained. You finally have time to take a look back over the day. You replay it in your mind. What if there was no coffee? What if you never yelled at your child? What if the child didn't miss the bus? What if you didn't speed? What if you were not late for work? What would have happened? The clue is you. Your reaction dictated the entire chain of events. If you had slowed down long enough to say, it's okay, baby, accidents happen. I can change my shirt. And by the way, wait for me. I'm going to drive you to school today. And on the way to school, you have a nice, pleasant conversation with your child, who now says, as they get out of the car, thank you. I love you. Have a nice day. And goes up the sidewalk, smiling and waving back at you. Now, you drive to the office, ready to take on the day. Problem solved. Yes, it does seem too simple. It seems too cut and dry. But guess what? It clearly shows you can control how you react to practically anything in your life. And you can react this way, considering another person's feelings. You have the power to alter or change a situation in most cases. Yes, it's you. You had no control over what happened with the coffee, but your reaction dictated the rest of the events in the day. So I surmise that you can dictate what happens for the rest of your life just by your reaction. You can choose to be angry. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to be indifferent, confused, concerned, or you can choose to be a thoughtful being concerned with the plight and situation of other beings around you. It only takes willpower to give ourselves permission to make life an experience we can enjoy. Everything we do, everything we give, everything we say, or even things that we think. They have the power to come back to us. It is how we react that is life altering, life changing. Try it. You cannot control everything that happens to you, but you can control how you react. And that's my two cents. What's yours? Let's talk about it. Thank you for listening. 
I'd like to say that um, the store is open. I've tried it a couple of different times, a couple of different ways. It has some glitches in it, but I do believe that Shopify, that's the store, I do believe that they're working on it. I did send uh, information uh, to the account um, people. Additionally, I understand there was something wrong with the comments section for YouTube. I sent in a request to them to look into it, and they are. Just drop me a comment, drop me a notice, hit me up over on the email at now you know 2004 at gmail.com and let me know if you're having any issues uh, with the site. I'd also like to ask you to subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell, and remember. You don't know what you don't know.